Hello, this is Hannah, and we're going to continue on with our histology series, and we're working on part five now. So we're starting up with our connective tissues, and we're going to introduce the concept and then get through um, loose connective tissue proper. All right, so when we were looking at epithelium, remember that the traits that distinguish epithelium were that the cells were all basically the same size and shape, and they were all closely packed together and there was always a free edge. Connective tissue contrasts really nicely with epithelium in that it's the opposite, all right? The cells are widely spaced. They are not typically next to each other. They're not touching each other, holding hands, or anything like that. And there is typically no, or there shouldn't be, a free edge, um, okay? So those are features of connective tissue. So with connective tissue, what, what's special about it is the fact that it consists of the living matter, which is cells, plus extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix, looking at the extracellular, so it's above and beyond the cellular, we're gonna divide that into two major components. You have ground substance, and you have fibers. And then of the fibers, we have three major kinds. We have collagen, and we have reticular. And I want you to notice what I'm doing right there. I'm gonna keep those in white, and then I'm gonna switch to a different color for the elastic fibers. The reason I did that is because collagen and reticular are the same protein, which means in some ways they have the same function, and we'll get to that in a little bit, okay? The ground substance is interesting in that it changes based on the function, and it can be a liquid, and that liquid can be very watery, or it could be more like a syrup, so examples of this would be blood versus blood plasma, excuse me, blood plasma versus the um, the fluid, the, the interstitial fluid or extracellular fluid in um, the connective tissue propers, okay? Or it can be a gel, and the example would be in cartilage. Okay. Or it can be a mineral, and the example is in bone. Okay. Now that brings us to the point where we can talk about the four major classes of connective tissue. Okay, and I'm going to start using that as my abbreviation. First of all, we have connective tissue proper, okay? Um, please don't call this fibrous tissue. Um, I'm gonna put a note here. I don't like how it's described in the salad and book. I think it's confusing and I don't want you to use it. I want you to use what I'm explaining, okay? So you've got connective tissue proper, and my abbreviation for that is CTP. That's a P, not a D. All right, the next major category is cartilage. And then you've got bone, okay? And then you've got <coughs> lymph and blood. Now I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice how these basically correspond to the ground substance, all right? You change the ground substance, it really changes functionally what this tissue does. And then to further change it for the different types of, say, cartilage versus connective tissue proper, you would change up the fibers or the cell types, all right? so. Cartilage, bone, lymph, and blood are kind of easy to separate out, okay? 
connective tissue proper it's like how do you define it well it's not cartilage bone limp or blood it's going to have a li liquid background but its fibers are going to be present okay so fibers are soluble whereas in bone and excuse me blood and limp fibers are dissolved oh i just messed that up fibers are insoluble and in blood and limp the fibers are dissolved which means they are soluble okay so that is a major difference between those two so you kind of have to do a kind of a compare and contrast now in my note slides i list the basic functions of connective tissue insulation transportation bind support storage protection it's on the slide but i don't actually want you to memorize that because what I want you to memorize instead is the specific functions of each specific type of connective tissue. So I'm not even gonna write down the general definition of connective tissue for that reason, okay? Um, now, let's kind of start focusing in. Um, actually, let's, let's talk about the extracellular matrix a little bit more. So I was talking up here about the fibers, okay? And we're just gonna kind of erase some of this so that I've got a little bit more room to work, okay? The ground, um, so I said that these were the same protein, okay? Um, I'm not asking you to memorize that they're the same protein, but because of they're the same protein, they can both resist tension, okay? Collagen's big function is going to be resist tension. Reticular can resist tension, but it's weak resist tension because reticular fibers are like as thin as spider silk. All right, super, super thin, whereas collagen fibers are thicker, okay? And they're more noticeable, okay? All right, so, and when I say spider silk, I'm talking about like on a photomicrograph. Um, the, the reticular fibers look thin like spider silk, whereas collagen is gonna look, look more like a shoelace string or a thicker string or a rope, okay? Um, the thing to remember, so what is tension? That's actually tension, or we can talk about something having tensile strength, okay? If I have a rope, like this, okay? And we're gonna play tug of war. Okay, one person is gonna pull this way, one person is, is gonna pull that way. And they're just gonna tug it back and forth. The rope does not break, so it resists tension because it has high tensile strength that is illegible all right now what we're going to do is we're going to change our rope and now our rope is going to be made out of gum and we got our people and we got our person and they're going to pull it apart and what's going to happen is when they start tugging it's gonna break in the middle because gum has low tensile strength, whereas a rope has high tensile strength, so it resists tension. So tension is the same idea pulling apart. Now here I want you to be very, very careful. I'm gonna come over here and then I'll go back in a minute. We've got a word in the English language that we like to use called stretch. I would like you to erase it from your vocabulary and not use it in this class ever, okay? The reason is we use the word stretch in English very sloppily. 
so that sometimes we use it to mean the exact opposite of how we use it in another situation. When I have a rope and I am pulling either side, I am not stretching it. I am pulling, so I am dealing with tension, okay? If I have a rubber band, okay, so it's like this, and we're gonna pull this way and this way, okay? Now, this rubber band is then gonna go like this, and it's gonna be fairly straight. When it bounces back, so it goes from here to here, and then it's gonna go from here to here, so that it goes back to its normal shape, this is called recoil, okay? So that the rubber band goes back to its preferred length or preferred amount of tension, okay? So when you pull on things, you're pulling them. Most things like collagen are not going to break unless they're weak, okay? Now, unfortunately, we will use stretch to describe this and to this in the English language. But elastic fibers, their purpose is not to stretch. Their purpose is to recoil. So if we come back over here, the function of elastic fibers is to recoil back to original length. Collagen and reticular fibers, their function is not to stretch because if they stretch, they've now not done their job. Collagen and reticular fibers resist tension, which means they resist being pulled apart, which means they are resisting being stretched. So you do not want to stretch collagen and reticular because if you do, you destroy it. So do not write that they stretch, write that they resist tension. Elastic fibers, we don't really care that they have stretched. What we care is that they go back to their original shape. So they recoil back to original. All right, now, Let's differentiate the collagen and the reticular. So as I said, they both resist tension. Now reticular fibers, I'm gonna use some green to bring an arrow over to give us a little bit more space to write. So what is different about reticular? So it's weak resist tension. What they're really going to do is form a stroma or framework in an organ or tissue area. Um, and this stroma or framework um, provides um, structure for other cells. So these cells are basically gonna be hanging out in and around those reticular fibers. So they basically help to kind of form the, so if you think of a house and the house has uh, wooden beams between the walls, the reticular fibers are more like the wooden beams that are forming the frame of the house, okay? All right, I think we've hit on those fibers sufficiently. Let's talk a little bit more about the ground substance now. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna kind of talk about the function and what it's made of. So we'll just put made of, okay. So that ground substance, it can be a semi-liquid or it can be a gel or it can be a mineral, okay? Um, it's gonna consist of obviously of water because everything has water in it. Um, it's gonna have proteins in it. It'll have cells in it. Um, and then the fibers, the cells and the fibers, let me specify that, the cells and the fibers float or exist within the ground substance. So the ground substance is like the swimming pool. All right, the functions of ground substance. Well, the function is going to change. 
depending on what type of ground substance you are using. We'll talk more about the function of ground substance with each different type of connective tissue as we get into them. Let's summarize quickly the cells that are present in connective tissue proper. First, let's do some definitions. We have three suffixes that tell you functionally what a cell is doing. I consider blast cells beginner cells or maker cells. Site means cell and it's the mature functional cell. Clast is chaos or destruction cells. So I can take uh, any root word for a cell with a few exceptions and put these on the end and it changes the name. So fibroblast is a maker of fibers cell. Now we don't really talk about fibrocytes or fibroclasts. Then I have chondroblast. Chondro means cartilage. So this is a maker of cartilage cells, okay? And then we've got um, osteoblast, osteocyte, osteoclast. So osteoblasts make bone, osteocyte is the mature bone cell, osteoclasts destroy bone, okay? Um, generally this works out just fine and, and, and all of these works these cell names work together. We do have one exception for blood. So you have the hematopoietic stem cell. And you're like, really? Why is it called that when everything else is called something else? It just is. And this makes red blood cells, white blood cells, and your um, uh, platelet cells, okay? All right, so the different cells that you're gonna find that you need to remember, you've got um, adipocytes, okay? Adipose means fat or lipid, so these are your fat cells. All right, something to keep in mind, adipose tissue is not the same thing as adipocyte. So the adipocyte is the actual cell, the adipose tissue is the entire tissue, okay? Then you got like your white blood cells, which are also called leukocytes, and they, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we'll be looking at those in a little bit. The, um, we've got we don't really talk much about these in this chapter. We've got micro, neutrophils, um, eosinophils, and lymphocytes. Actually, we'll talk more about lymphocytes with this chapter, okay? You also have macrophages, okay? Which differentiate from monocytes, okay? And then you have mast cells, which are differentiating from basophils. All right, and then, well, you might come across this word plasma cell, which is a type of B cell, which is a type of lymphocyte. Okay. And we'll be finding all of these within the, the connective tissues, including the osteocytes, the fibroblasts, the chondroblasts, the chondrocytes, okay? All right, now we're starting to get into some of the meat and we're of this topic, and we're gonna start talking about the different types of connective tissues. We're gonna start with connective tissue proper, okay? 
Now, connective tissue proper is defined by its ground substance. And its ground substance is a liquid with fibers and cells in it. What's important about this ground substance is what it can do functionally, okay? Functionally, it is a liquid background that is like a swimming pool that everything else floats in, okay? So everything is floating in it, but it's also going to be something that things can move and pass or swim through. So I want you to visualize a swimming pool. And then I want you to visualize somebody throwing a bunch of pool noodles in it. Those are your fibers. And then I want you to visualize people throwing in rings and other little toys. And those are your cells, okay? Now, let's say some of those toys are wind-up toys and they can move through the water, okay? So those particular toys we can think of as nutrients or gases and they can move from one side of the pool to the other because it is a liquid background that it can essentially swim through, okay? So it's a pass-through, a swim-through. Sometimes people describe it as a sieve that kind of filters out particles. Um, I don't like using the word filter because then it gets mixed up with the concept of filtration, which is different. Um, so the ground substance is key. The connective tissue poppers have the potential for having all three fiber types. So collagen, reticular, and elastic. And what you're gonna do is change the types of fibers that are present, either the quantities, or you might um, re reduce the presence of one or two completely. So like you might increase the number of collagen and decrease the elastic, or increase the elastic and get rid of the reticular, those kinds of things. That's what you're gonna do in order to change the functional aspects of the different types of connective tissue. Now, before we get into loose and dense, I want to briefly mention mesenchyme, okay? So let's actually go to the next slide because I have a picture of it. All right, so over here we have mesenchyme. So mesenchyme is an embryonic tissue, all right? It is basically the precursor for all of your connective tissues, and it is most similar to connective tissue proper. Once you are born, the only example we have of it is in the umbilical cord, but basically everything starts out. So if we come over here and we look at the umbilical cord, we've got the vein and the two arteries. This mess in here is the mesenchyme. And if we look over here at the um, photomicrograph, you see the, the vein, and the two arteries, the, they're calling them placental artery and vein, um, our course calls them umbilical artery and vein. And then this all in here, the common name is Wharton's jelly, but it, it's basically mesenchyme, okay? The reason I bring this up is because our classic photomicrograph that we use for our mesenchyme uh, excuse me, that we use for um, explaining connective, uh, a realer connective tissue proper is usually from um, this type of mesenchyme tissue. Okay, so let's bring up the blackboard again so that we can talk about loose versus dense connective tissue. So first of all, let's talk about the traits. So, oops, loose connective tissue is defined by the quantity. Actually, let's erase this. Let me do this differently. What defines these? The def de what defines whether it's loose or dense is the quantity of fibers packed into the ground substance. All right, let me stop my phone from doing that. All right, so that's the major thing that's gonna differentiate them. 
So loose has fewer fewer fibers and more ground substance. In contrast, dense has more fibers and less ground substance. Okay? We have three categories, three types of loose and three types of dense. Okay? So for our loose, ugh, for our loose, the most classic is a realer connective tissue proper. Okay? And again, I do not want you calling these fibrous tissues like the book does. That gets confusing because of the way we use fibrous to describe fascia and the way it gets over generalized to dense irregular and dense regular in the body, the way we use it in physical therapy, occupational therapy. Um, and for me, the loose connective tissues are not seriously fibrous, so I have a really hard time visualizing them when someone says that it's fibrous connective tissue. And a lot of other books, a lot of other anatomists do not refer to this category as fibrous connective tissue. They refer to it as connective tissue proper, and I think that is a better, more classic name. So do not call this all fibrous connective tissue. Just call it connective tissue proper, please. So I'll just write over here, not fibrous CT for name. Okay, so we have the areolars. Now, the areolars, remember, if you put it with mucosa, we can then change its name to lamina propria. So just remember that because it's something that's easy to forget, okay? Um, some examples of where you would find it. So um, this would be between the epidermis and the thicker layers of the dermis. Okay, so it's the, the, the papillary layer, all right? We find it in and around organs. Um, it has a lot of different functions, padding, reducing friction, stores fluids and nutrients, fights infection. But for me, what I want you to really focus on is that a realer connective tissue is what you put next to epithelium because its pool of liquid allows easy transport of gases, nutrients, and waste to the epithelium. So I want you to remember that epithelium is a vascular. Without a realer connective tissue being right next to it, it would have a hard time getting the things that it needs, all right? When, when it get oxygen, it wouldn't get its nutrients. It would have no place to put its waste products. You could use another connective tissue there, but remember, a realer has lots of ground substance. That is its dominant trait. Fewer fibers, more ground substance. So because it has so much ground substance, it is very easy for things to swim across. So I want you to visualize a swimming pool again, and you throw in five pool noodles and a couple of toys. And the wind-up toys can very easily move in and around the pool, pool noodles to get to the other side. Now if I instead put in 500 pool noodles, it would have a really hard time getting across it. So functionally, something with a lot of fibers in it is hard to get through. Functionally, something with very few fibers and lots of liquid is very easy to pass through. So it is a pass through for things to get to the epithelium. It also helps store extra liquids. So this is a storage place so that you don't you know, if you start becoming dehydrated, you can start taking the liquids out of that areolar connective tissue, okay? And stuff like that, all right? 
Now the next kind of loose connective tissue is adipose. This is gonna be a little different from your book, okay? The way the book is doing this. Um, this is the classic organization for connective tissue propers. So I want you to use this, not what the book says, okay? So over here, don't use Saladin Books Organization for CTP, okay? Just like I don't want you to use the fibrous connective tissue name for loose connective tissues. So adipose is all about the fats, the lipids, okay? Reticular connective tissue is almost the same as a reeler, but only has reticular fibers. Okay, so there's no collagen fibers, there's no elastic fibers. A reeler, okay, has collagen reticular and elastic fibers, okay? All right, let's look at our density. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of making a little bit of a concept map here. So this is kind of a nice little beginner for a concept map. All right, so now we're gonna come over and we're gonna look at our dense connective tissues. All right, so what's different? Lots and lots of fibers. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're looking at our dents. Um, we've got the three major types dense, regular, we have dense, irregular, and we have elastic. And it's really important so that you don't get this confused with other things to put the CTP next to the elastic because you do not want to confuse it with elastic cartilage. All right, so these two in common English are what we will refer to as the fibrous CTs, okay? Um, they have so much fibers that it's difficult to see the connective to, uh, the ground substance. So in dense regular, the dominant feature is collagen goes in one direction. Whereas in dense irregular, collagen is multi-directional. Uh, di directional. Okay. Because of that, this one, remember collagen resists tension. So this one, its function is resist tension in one direction. Whereas this one, resist tension in many directions. Okay. What I need you to memorize for function, resist tension in one direction, resist tension in many directions. You need to memorize that. So where do you find these things? So some good examples for dense regular would be tendons, ligaments, those sorts of things. Okay. Um, dense irregular, you can find those also sometimes in aponeuroses, um, just like you can find dense regular. One of the things that can be a little confusing with dense regular and irregular is that there are areas where it blends from one to the next, and it might go back and forth, and it might be in different ratios in different people, which is why we will often lump certain areas and just say it's fibrous CT because it's difficult to say whether it's regular or irregular without a microscope, okay? So the classic places for dense irregular would be in the dermis of your skin, um, also joint capsules. When you are giving an example of where to find a tissue type, you need to be really careful with saying skin because skin has three major tissue types. It has in the epidermis, stratified squamous. In the dermis, depending on where you are, it will be 
a regular in the papillary region and dense irregular in the reticular region. So you need to specify. You can't just say, oh, stratified squamous is in the skin. You need to say stratified squamous is in the epidermis of the skin. Okay, so you need to be a little bit more specific. Okay, elastic connective tissues are often very thin and difficult to see. Okay, again, function. They have the ability to recoil. This is what I want you to remember. Don't talk about it stretching. It recoils back to its original shape. So you will find elastic fibers in certain aponeuroses. You will find it in the elastic lamina in large arteries like the aorta. You will find elastic CTP wrapped around alveoli in the lungs, okay? So you've got it in areas where you need the basically, you need the structure to basically recoil back to its original shape, okay? All right, we're now going to go and look at some pictures. All right, this picture is your classic picture of a realer connective tissue, okay? It is also the picture that we will use to explain the structure of connective tissue. So first of all, connective tissues all have a ground substance. In this case, it's a liquid that everything is floating in. All connective tissues have fibers. So for collagen, I want you to come down and I want you to draw an arrow to right there. That's a collagen fiber. This is a collagen fiber. All right, so those are both collagen fibers. I'm gonna to change to green to show you the reticular. The reticular is right here. Sorry, that's not the reticular. Um, the reticular is this blue spider web. Okay. Um, what I want you to notice is that the collagen and the reticular fibers are staining or being drawn with the same color. They're both bluish. That's to represent the fact that they are technically made out of the same type of protein. So elastic fibers, so here would be elastic fiber. Here's another elastic fiber. So notice that it's staining a different color, okay? Now for cells, on a picture like this, you can figure out what they are, okay? On other things you might not be able to, like on a photomicrograph, it could be very difficult. So I've got a fibroblast right here. This is also a fibroblast, okay? Now, looking at the nuclei, I can tell that this is a neutrophil. This is also a neutrophil. Because this has a big nucleus that's nice and round, I know that this is my plasma cell. Because this looks like some monster from a blobby video game, I know that that's a macrophage. This would be another B cell. This would be another plasma cell or B cell. So remember plasma cells are B cells. Okay, this is an adipocyte. All right, over here is another macrophage. Here's another macrophage. Okay, this is all ground substance. All right, so this is the basic structure that we're working with when we're looking at all connective tissues. And this is also what our irregular connective tissue would look like. All right, let's look at the next picture. All right, over here on these uh, photomicrograph slides, I've put in a yellow box that tells you where you're gonna find these types of tissues as an example. So lamin appropriate is an excellent choice. Um, interstitial tissues around organs you can also put in the dermis of the skin. Function, this is the best one to remember, all right? The movement of gases through the ground substance into adjacent epithelial tissues. These are also functions, but they're less explanatory. And that one's not right, okay. Um, now, let's look at the actual picture. So, 
I want you to notice the white or yellowish spaces here. That's your ground substance, okay? So um, for some reason I don't have that drawn in. So let's say ground substance. Okay, so we're gonna put that right there, okay? Your elastic fibers are gonna stain dark. We have to use two different stains to get elastic fibers to show up, so we're gonna stain those dark. Collagen fibers, so this is the word collagen right here, okay? Sorry, when this transfers over from PowerPoint to PDF, it doesn't always um, show stuff correctly. So those are gonna be the thick red lines. So there's one, here's one, here's one. This is collagen, those are all collagen. Now for reticular fibers, I'm gonna to switch to green and I'm gonna mark those. So this is gonna be reticular. So you can see the reticular fibers are really faint, thin lines that are in the background, both collagen and reticular stain the same colors. Okay, now on a photomicrograph, I have purple dots. So here's a purple dot, here's a purple dot, here's a purple dot, purple dot, purple dot, purple dot, purple dot. Purple dot. On a photomicrograph, all I care about is if you've got purple dots, those are cells, okay? On this one, because I happen to have the book where this came from, and those people had time to look at this under higher magnification, I know that that's a mast cell, and I know that that's a fibroblast. But looking at it under this magnification, I really can't tell that just by looking at it. So if you just put cell, that would be fine. However, on a drawing where you can clearly see the structure of the fibroblast like on the previous slide, you should be able to tell me that the thing secreting the collagen is a fibroblast, okay? All right, let's move on to the next picture. All right, so what I've done here is I've given you a picture of classic areolar connective tissue, and I'm going to bring it over here and we're gonna blow it up. And we're gonna say right here, Oops, let's change to something that's a little bit more noticeable. What will show up well? Maybe the yellow will show up well. Right there, that's collagen, okay? Um, the faint lines there are reticular fibers. The dark staining lines there are elastic. Purple dots are cells. White space is ground substance. You should be able to do this. You should be able to see this slide, recognize that it's a real or connective tissue, identify the major structures that I've just identified for you, and tell me its function. Okay, now this is the classic arealer slide that we use in our AMP1 labs and that we use for explaining the structure of a real or connective tissue. Now, everywhere else in the human body, the areolar connective tissue will never look like that because of the magnification and density of what we use. So let's zoom it out and look at what real or areolar connective tissue looks like. This area from here to here and from here, basically all the way down to here except for this stuff, is areolar connective tissue. And we call this specifically lamina propria because this is in a mucosa, okay? But it is a realer connective tissue proper, okay? Now from basically here down to here, this is also a realer connective tissue proper. How do I tell when it doesn't look like this picture? I tell from context. Okay, so I'm going to use context. I am next to an epithelium. So this is epithelium, and this is epithelium. That means right next to it is going to be a realer connective tissue, okay? What I can see at this magnification are 
the pink lines of the collagen fibers. And remember, in a reeler, the collagen fibers do not go in one direction, so they're kind of going in different directions. Over here, I can kind of see them kind of doing this business. All right, they're faint, they're difficult to see, but they are there. And then we have the purple dots. So I've got purple dot, purple dot, 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 dot. And then over here, they're more red, but you can see I'm putting some of the dots on. All right, those are the cells that are present. And that's pretty much all I can see. At this magnification, I can't really see the areolar. With the staining they've used, I can't see the elastic fibers. You just have to know that they're there, okay? But this is what you will see for a reeler in the human body. This is what you will see for a reeler on the human body. If you have an epithelium, you know there will be at least a thin smear of a reeler connective tissue just deep to that epithelium, okay? because epithelium is avascular and I need gases, I need oxygen to diffuse from here to the epithelium to keep it alive. All right, let's look at the next picture. All right, adipose tissue. So again, what does it do? Well, it is padding around organs so that if you get hit in the back, the adipose pad around your kidneys keeps it from getting hurt, okay? It obviously is storing the fat, which means it's also storing fat energy, lipid energy. Now, if we look at the cell, this is one adipose site. I do have fibers. I'm gonna show the fibers. The fibers are squished in between the cells. This is considered loose because the fibers are spread far apart. So this is where you're gonna find all the fibers. Then I've got a dot and a dot, a dot, dot. These dots are the nuclei. Sometimes you don't see them in the cell because the way the tissue's been cut, it's been cut out, but you'll see they're really tiny and everything else inside is lipids, okay? Let's look at the last slide for this section. All right, this is reticular connective tissue proper. Now. What I want you to pay attention to is the fact that I wrote in here, high power. This is really high magnification. It is really high magnification so that you can see the reticular fibers. So everything that I'm going over in yellow, these are all reticular fibers and they are forming the stroma, all right? of this particular tissue or organ. So it forms the internal stroma of the organ, okay? And then I've got purple dots. So here's a purple dot, purple dot, purple dot, purple dot. I can tell by just looking at them that some of them are lymphocytes and some of them are fibroblasts, but I'm not going to ask you to differentiate them. So if you could just remember that all the purple dots are cells, and most of these are gonna be either fibroblasts or lymphocytes, but you can also find the occasional macrophage, and in the spleen you will see red dots, and those red dots are red blood cells, okay? Now, with reticular connective tissue proper, it is really difficult to to see the fibers unless it's at high magnification. So when we look at it at lower magnification, you're just gonna see lines and you're gonna kinda need to know the context. You're gonna need to know what the organ is in order to really know what you're looking at, okay? But a trademark of reticular fibers is gonna be a high percentage of cells. So they tend to really pack in a lot of fibroblasts, lymphocytes, and other cells wherever there is reticular connective tissue. And it's not unusual to have a thick wedge of a realer CTP, and then you have a little circle that looks really, really dense, and that's actually reticular connective tissue with a high density of lymphocytes in it, okay? All right, um, oh, the other thing with reticular is, okay, focus on this, only reticular fibers, so there are no collagen fibers and there are no elastic fibers, okay? 
All right, I think that was a pretty long slideshow. Um, so we're gonna stop right there and you can go take a break and then come back for the next um, video on the dense connective tissues, which will be shorter.